Well, hello, and thanks for joining us for another episode of Mid-American Gardener. And don't adjust your channel. We are in the studio for the first time in, gosh, 18 months, yeah. almost two years or almost so? Almost two years. Jen is here with me today. We're doing a special in-studio show. She's got tons of stuff that we are going to talk about. She's going to repot some things. She's going to tell you some things not to do <laughs> um, and just give us a good start on our house plants and some how to's, right? And sure. we've also got some questions that you sent in on Facebook and we'll be answering those as well. So Jen, since it's been a while, since we've seen you in studio, yeah. tell us a little bit about you and where we can find you in the garden. I'm Jen Nelson. You can find me online at Grounded and Growing. Um, I write a blog and I teach horticulture at the University of Illinois. So um, I'm kind of in a lot of places, wear a lot of different hats and I brought actual stuff from my actual house, so you can see I don't always do things 100% perfectly, and I kill things, and I, <laughs> I'm just as real of a gardener as all of She's you watching. just like us, just <laughs> yes. like us. So, I wanted to ask you, how does it feel being back in the classroom? It feels uh, um, good. Um, it's felt a little bit odd at first, but I can tell that the students really enjoy yeah. uh, being there. And you've done some pretty cool things so far. You mentioned a couple things yeah, before the show. We're doing, I'm teaching vegetable gardening. And so um, the second half of the course, we've done some things like making pickles and making salsa. And we carved mm. pumpkins for Halloween. So it was, I need it's, to sign it's up. Been fun. Yeah, you can come take, yeah, come take it. It's fun. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Okay. So uh, we're going to start off with, like I said, Jen brought a lot of stuff for us to experiment with today. And the very first thing we're going to talk about are pots and soil. So whichever one you want to start with, we're going to do some repotting. So um, let's talk a little bit about soil mix. We okay. can start there. We can start so there. I've got a couple of different kinds of plants here today. I've got some that are more succulent um, and then ones that are more a traditional house plant ish. Um, and so for the ones that are just a traditional tropical house plant, this is just um, generic potting mix. Um, the same stuff I used outside for my annuals. Mm -hmm. um, it, it works just as well inside for house plants as well. So it's got a, a pretty heavy peat base, um, does have some other ingredients in there for added drainage. Um, but it's going to hold on to a little more water than what is for succulents. Uh, what's for succulents has some more sand and um, has a lot better drainage, so it's going to um, not hold on to as much water, which is important for succulents. That's like the number one way to kill them. You kill them with kindness because you think I'm going to wa keep watering them. And actually over the winter months, you should barely water them at all. Okay, good to know. Yeah. Now I did want to ask you, since we are moving into those winter months, do you use a potting soil with fertilizer in the winter? Are you supposed to? Um, I don't, um, generally speaking. Uh, when we bring our houseplants in for the um, winter, they're slowing down. They're, a lot of them will stop growing altogether and just kind of hang out or grow very slowly. If you have a situation where you have good lights, good plant lights, where you can keep them growing, mm -hmm. they'll slow down some still because even though you have all that, it's usually not as good as the summertime sure. and not as warm. Um, you can do some very weak fertilizer, but I would hold off if at all possible until the late winter, until we're getting ready to get everything back outside again. So maybe as late as like March or April. Okay, good to know. Cause we are just trying to get them to survive. Yeah, right? that's this the goal. This isn't their prime time. No, this is not their prime time at okay. all. Okay, and we're gonna talk about that a little sure. bit later as well. Cause Jen has a list of things she calls the do as I say <laughs> and the not the, the do as I do. So we're gonna get to that also. So, um, the other important thing is choosing pot size, mm -hmm. and she's got a lot of cuttings and transplants and things that we're going to divide. Um, and so I struggle with this sometimes, you know, which plants like really tight shoes, which plants like a little bit more room. So when you're choosing, is there a good rule of thumb or does it depend on the plant? How do you choose? How, how I choose... Um... First, I look at what I have already at home. What's available? <laughs> yeah, what's <Step> available? <laughs> um, but generally, you don't want to go more than an inch, two inches maximum, bigger than what you've already got. Okay. Um, you don't want to have something swimming. Like I, I was originally thinking that this little tiny succulent might fit well in this pot, but this is way too big. So you think that's even too big? That too, okay. that pot's too big. I probably now would I, make that mistake. Yeah. I. <laughs> what's going to happen? when you put that in there is that you're going to have, this doesn't have that much of a root system. You're going to put that in a big, a big sea of wet soil. And for a succulent in the winter, especially that's going to mm. invite some root rot in. Uh, I have another um, succulent in a same size pot that's been growing there 
for about a year now, and it's about to bust the pot open. Wow. I I meant to grab that one and bring it, and I forgot, but that one is probably a good size for this pot, so I will save that and put this one somewhere else. But um, just for an example, yeah, that's just going to be too small, but the one that I've got that's really full and busting out of the pot would be fine. So don't go up. The the rule of thumb was like don't go up. Like an inch or two. An inch or two. Okay, yeah. so would you say maybe this guy? Oh, yeah, that would be... That would be a that much be more a appropriate closer size. Match. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. So let's jump in. Let's just, um, sure. we talked about pots. We talked about our soil. Let's talk about dividing. Now, this is where you give your speech. <laughs> oh, my, my disclaimer, yes, because yes. <laughs> this is completely not the right time of year to be doing any of this. But this all started when I was putting up, adjusting my grow lights, and I had a grow light um, go bad, and I... I don't know enough about LED lights and electrical circuits to attempt to even fix it. So I was taking the old one out and I knocked this plant off the shelf and I broke its pot into a million pieces. And so this is not the right time of year to do this because we everything's kind of slowing down. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you repot things or put things in a bigger pot, it kind of are prompting plants to start growing and giving them space and it's not the right time for them to grow. Mm -hmm. But I don't want this, this is not going to do very well sitting like this until the spring. So we've got to figure out some um, pot to put it in. So I was thinking possibly this pot and it's also got some little babies off the, oh, the base. So we may be able to share some with our gardening friends. My favorite. My favorite. Uh, but I, I held on to the pot that broke because um, I end up, keeping a, a, a pot of these around for covering up the hole in the mm -hmm. bottom of the pot. Mm -hmm. um, there's no sense in, I, I was brought up uh, that you need to put like rocks in the bottom of the pot. I, was, I never knew why I did it. For drainage. Drainage, okay. But it doesn't do anything to improve the drainage. It just sh like shortens the volume of soil in the pot. You just want to cover that hole gotcha. so that the soil doesn't wash away. Oh, I thought it was something way more magical I thought and so too. serious. Yeah. But yeah, and I didn't believe it at first, Mike, but my mom told me. Yeah, you, have you to always do it this put a little handful of like pea gravel or something yes, in the bottle that you Yes, in the and it, there is like a zone of saturation in the soil that the bottom, so many inches of soil, is going to stay mm -hmm. a little wetter just because of the physics of water and soil. And by putting those rocks there, you're just moving that zone higher. Gotcha. So it doesn't really help anything. And I love when you turn into a real scientist. Sometimes the plant nerd comes it just out. Comes it just out. comes out it just naturally. Comes out. Okay, so while you're setting up, because we're going to do some actual repotting here sure. on the show today. So while you're setting up, we're going to check in with Liz and John, and they're going to talk about end of year fundraising and how you can help out and be a friend of Mid American Gardener. Guys? Hey, um, obviously I am not John. Um, I am stepping in for John Steinbacher tonight. He could not be here. And as you can see, Sometimes with scheduling, uh, it necessitates that we do pre-tape our programs here, and that is the case tonight. Um, so I am here instead of John, but I'm happy to join the program this evening, and I'm here with Liz Westfield, who is in our marketing department, and we are enjoying the show right along with you. I am learning quite a bit about different soils and why I've killed plants that I've killed. <laughs> uh, kindness, which makes me feel a lot better, actually. <laughs> yeah. Jen was telling us, you know, killing with kindness, too much watering, uh, bad for plants, yes. and so I'm going to lean into that kindness, mm -hmm. but I can't keep a plant alive to save my life. And I, uh, I was just over here making notes like, oh, that's why I've killed that one. Oh, that one too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but we're learning so much, and we're so excited to be back in the studio, yes. which is another part of the scheduling. By the way, this is Erin Lippitz oh, from yeah. Membership, uh, our major <laughs> gifts director. I'm joining. not John, but I'm Erin. <laughs> <laughs> this is Erin, pinch hitting or pinch pledging. Either way, we really love that we're back in the studio. We got to take it easy. It's baby steps and sometimes we have to record, but it's a yes. good energy. It's a good vibe. It was great yes. to watch Tanisha and Jen doing their thing, making a mess in the studio and yeah. I love it. Making a huge mess and I, I love that. That looks like my kitchen at the end of, without the dirt, but <laughs> cooking stuff all around. So I can really relate to that. Um, great to be back here. Great to have Mid-American Gardener back in the studio. Great to be back here with you in of the course, studio. Of course, yeah, you too. And we are at the end of the year, coming up on the end of the year, and it's our fun drive. And we are here tonight asking for you to support Mid-American Gardener and all the programs on WILL. Give us a call at 217-244-9455 or go online at willgive.org. We are trying to raise tonight, before the end of this show, $1,500 in support of Mid-American Gardener. And 
WILL and PBS have a long history of educational programming. It's a, it's a pillar of what we do here at WILL. And you can support that and all the other great mm -hmm. educational shows that we, we do here. Minimary Guard is just one example of a long line of programming that we do here at Educational. We hope that you take the chance tonight to call or go online and be part of that Learning First mission at WILL. Absolutely, and as we finish another interesting year, uh, this show in particular has been able to be flexible and yeah. pivot and still meet you where you are and give you the gardening advice that you love and you count on, but in a way that is safe for them and safe for all of us here at WILL. Mm -hmm. And so we hope that Illinois Public Media has helped you through another interesting, sometimes interesting. difficult COVID year, still finding that sense of normalcy, that place uh, that you can turn to, even if it looks a little bit different or it's acted a little bit different. So we'd love to hear from you, especially if Mid American Gardener is one of your go-tos, 217-244-9455 or online at willpledge.org and tell us why you love Mid American Gardener. Stream the best of PBS on any device with the PBS Video app. All your favorite drama, history, science, news, and documentaries, all in one place. Watch your PBS station live or catch up on the shows you missed. Support your PBS station and you can get Passport, giving you full seasons, early releases, special collections, and more. Get the PBS Video app now and stream the best of PBS anytime, anywhere. As you can see, the PBS video app, a great resource for catching the programs that you love mm -hmm. here at WILL TV, including your favorite local gardening show. Uh, this episode and all past episodes, if you're just in a real gardening kick, you can stream to your delight. That is uh, the PBS video app, it's a free download. You can get it on things like Roku, your phone, like smart TVs. Mm -hmm. All those fancy technology words, uh, but yeah, <laughs> wherever TV. wherever you're streaming, you can find the PBS video app and find Mid American Gardener, mm -hmm. which we would love if you could support right now at willgive.org or two one seven two four four nine four five five. I gave the old the old sites. That's yes. how long it's been since <laughs> I've been in the studio. Uh, but when you do go there, there's some great premiums yes, you can grab. Some Great gifts. When you make a gift, we like to say thank you in return. So this is our Mid-American Gardener uh, mug. It looks like a little terracotta planter. It's super cute. You could probably plant stuff in oh, it. Oh, that'd be super cute. Um, I mean, listen to Tanisha and Jen and, and figure <laughs> out if this is an okay pot for it, but um, super cute. And that is $7 a month as a sustainer or $84 as an annual or one-time gift. You can choose this as your gift. We also have this nice Midwest native plant primer, um, some great information, beautiful photos in here um, for you to take a look at and help with all of your gardening issues. That is $10 a month as a sustainer or $120 annual or a one-time gift. And a combo, book and mug, make your morning awesome drinking coffee and reading your book about plants, uh, $15 uh, as a sustainer or $180 as an annual donation or one-time gift and sustainer. That is a monthly ongoing contribution to this station, and it's very helpful for us, and your membership is always up to date. That's a great place to start if you're a brand new member and you want to come on and make a donation to the station. Sustaining memberships are the way to go, and if you are a lapsed member, maybe you donated in the past and you've forgotten a couple of years, come back on, renew your membership as a sustaining member. We'd love to hear from you tonight. 217-244-9455 or online at willgive.org. All of your donations support this show tonight that you're watching and the value and the education, educational programming that we bring throughout the year. Again, willgive.org or on online, that is online, or <laughs> on your phone, 217-244-9455. Thank you. All right, thanks guys. And we're gonna check back in with you just a little bit later. Okay, so as promised, We've got the uh, homeless succulent <laughs> out of its pot. The potless, potless succulent. Potless succulent out of its home. Temporary home. Okay, so this guy, tell, tell us about him. Uh, let's How see. long has he been, he or she, they, been? He's been, um, he came to me as um, he was potted in a pot with no drain hole, which is a no-no, mm -hmm. right? We know this. Um, and it was something I picked up at the grocery store because it was a cute pot. And it had a cute little macrame hanger. And why not? 
of course it's all pot. You're coming home with me. Yeah, come home with me, I'm going to fix you up. Um, so took it out of the pot and put it in the pot that originally broke. And it has had some, the problem with um, succulents that grow in this rosette pattern is sometimes if you get a leaf that's discolored mm -hmm. or has some d dead spots or a broken tip, it's kind of obvious. Um, that's one thing I don't like about ones that grow this way. But one thing that I do like is that they tend to Ooh. produce some babies. And when I was taking it, picked it up, one of them fell off. Yeah. And I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but um, there's a teeny tiny root starting, oh, I see that. Yep. starting to grow. Um, so it could theoretically, it should grow pretty readily. Um, at your house. I would let it kind of dry off a little now, bit. Now how long, about a week do you say, or a few days? I would What's say two, the, three days. Two, three days to I dry am, off a little? Well, I can tell you I have some here that I intended to let them dry two, three days, and it's been like two, three weeks, and eh. they're fine. <laughs> so <laughs> that's kind of what Real ends up happening. Gardening. <laughs> yes, this is, this is where this it is, happens. This is life, because we're all juggling a gajillion things, right? Very true. But succulents are very forgiving. So, I mean, yeah, we'll take these off. Now, are these called pups? I, I don't I think you could call them that. I don't know if that's the technical term. I usually think of pups more with, um, oh, like pineapple. I can't. I'm, okay. I'm forgetting the word. Oh, you've Bromeli got a bunch of bromeliads. There's a lot um, on here. I'm gonna probably cut these off. These have got some sort of. It's not gonna look great, but it's not gonna get any better. And this is apparently some sort of aloe because you can actually oh, yeah. feel. Definitely. Yep, I can see it. And there's lots of different aloes besides the ones that we... Now, are, is this medicinal? I, can you use I this have on no, I have no idea. This was literally like no-name succulent from the grocery store. So, <laughs> and I have not, I could go online and try to identify it, and I have not. I'm sure there's viewers out there that are tisking me right now. Probably. Like, she doesn't know anything. <laughs> yeah, I don't know everything. But you know what? Real I mean, plant people know that you just walk by it and grab it and you don't yeah, even care. You don't even things. know and you just it's pretend pretty... it's always been there when yes. your husband asks. Yes. So I'm That's just, this isn't going to get any better and it's going to look like a, a bad stub. That's all right. So I'm cutting that out. Just and a that, little aesthetic pruning. Yeah, but it's not, it's not going to help. It's going to look like that eventually. But sooner or later I made um, there's also an option if it gets really overgrown, I could just cut it out and root oh, the see. center. Um, like I said, succulents are super forgiving and you can see it was really tight in its pot and mm -hmm. I had used a pebble in that old pot to cover the, the drain hole. I'm not going to get super carried away um, breaking roots. up the roots. Kind of try to loosen them a, a little bit, especially if they're circling, if they're circling the pot. Because it's going to just continue to grow in a circle otherwise. So I've heard a lot of folks, and I've actually seen a lot of our panelists talk about teasing the roots out. Yeah. Um, in this particular instance, you don't think it's necessary? I, I'm doing it a little bit, but I'm not getting carried away. I don't want to break the Do whole all the, yeah. root ball. So I'm going to put, this is that cactus mix we were showing okay. earlier, and I'm just filling up kind of the bottom mm -hmm. of the pot. And the, the cactus mix, again, just has more sand, more It has more, more grit. sand, more... Um, it's more, lighter. Probably more perlite. It's going to drain a lot quicker, and that's a little bit too much. So I'm just going to take a little bit out. And what's a good? So when you said that's too much soil, where do you? What are you shooting for? I'm here? shooting for, and I have a tendency to plant things too high in the pot. I always struggle with that. I want it to be about a half an inch beneath the rim, so when I water, the water doesn't just roll right out. Yes. You want it to hold some. And this is about the size of the pot it fell out of, or it broke out of. So, because um, again, I don't want to really encourage it to grow a ton. So you Some can assistance. Yeah, yeah, sure. That in there. This is. And this was just a pot I already had, so my resource pile came in handy. <laughs> the reserves, huh? The reserves call them in. Yeah, the garage uh, <laughs> shelf is looking plentiful right yes, now. Yes, yes. And the best thing I ever bought was a. I bought a, um, it's a chrome um, kitchen cart Ooh. that is, was... On at, wheels? Yeah, on wheels. And it's Very got two smart. layers and um, is absolutely from the kitchen section, which I, you can find some great garden alternatives in the <laughs> kitchen section. And it sits in my garage and I can wheel it out and get out what's on there. But it's a good, um, it's good for me to have like a delimited space. Sure. Now it is creeping a little bit off the cart and I do need to get that <laughs> under control, but... I'll tell you, um, I am using my son's changing table 
because it's got the three <laughs> layers, perfect. right? So I've got all of the like uh, glass on the bottom and then like plant food and tools on the middle. And That's then I do perfect. the work on the top. That's it works beautifully. awesome. Yeah. I don't have enough room to do the work. Yeah. I do the work in my kitchen and my mom would be just dying. Well, you know. But it's my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beauty of it. So look, yeah, so, this guy's got a new so, home. So yeah, I'll water him in and he'll be happy. There we go. There you go. So now when you pack them in, let's talk a little bit about that. Do you like them? Are they supposed to be packed in tight? Well, you, want, you don't want any air pockets. And so this is where watering it in comes in really handy because as you water it in, that'll help settle the soil in place. You don't want to be putting all kinds of elbow grease and sure. packing it in really tight. Um, but this'll this will do and I'll, I'll water it once I get home because I don't want it to dump over in the car. Gotcha. Uh, okay. But, yeah. All right. So um, do you want to stay on succulents or do you want to branch off to Andrew's fairy garden? You could do the fairy garden if you I, want. Of course this guy's calling that my name. Guy, that looks well, you like a challenge. That. Should we do that? I want okay, let's one do might that one. Let's do that, that one. one might be tricky. So what's the story behind this guy? How long? Have um, this guy's been in, oh, probably since about probably five or six years in this pot. Wow. Because um, again, you said succulents are slow growing yeah, and they like tight shoes. A lot of times they like tight shoes. This is a, um, a zebra plant, a Haywardia, one of my favorites. It's one of those indestructible plants, um, but it met its match on my porch this summer with a rabbit. Ah. And that's why it looks like it's mowed down because it was mowed down <laughs> by a rabbit. Um, yeah, you can yeah. see all the, the nibbles and the... Yeah, this one didn't worry me as much as this other plant that um, I spent um, a great deal of time and money on that the rabbit also got. And it was actually when I... Um, I brought on the show before. I'm trying to re rebuild it from the ah. cuttings I was able to salvage. But yeah, I'm, this is one that I'm not sure what we're going to find when we bust it out. I love these kind of days. It's always fun to see what's in the pot. Because yeah. then you find out you've got all sorts of little babies in there that oh, yeah. I mean, you didn't even know about. Right, and no no spiders or... Mice. Mice. <laughs> yeah, no, mice wouldn't be in this little of a pot. Well, you got to worry about that in your bigger pots that you're bringing in. So, for those of you who just yes, brought public, those in. public service announcement, <laughs> pay attention. Um, I've had more than one call over the years from people oh that have been like, yeah, I can't figure what um, this, they'll find like little piles of tunnels, little, um, there's little, little like, it's dug out in the oh, pot wow. or they'll find a little, a little pile of dirt next to the or soil next to the pot on the floor um, or, you know, other signs. That's the mouse, yeah, that, you the brought mouse in. that you brought in. <laughs> or they start finding some things um, disturbed wherever they've got that big pot if it's in oh, their basement. Boy. Yeah. So pay attention to that. Check those for sure. This is kind of a tough one to figure out where do you start. Um, but we do have some good, nice little babies. Mm -hmm. and maybe So you're just going right I'm for it. I'm just going to go right for it. I may have, I brought some pruners and. Oh boy. The moment of truth. This is kind of a. Yay. Yay. So yeah, this was kind of past due for being. Um, wow, there's so much there's in there. There's so much in there. Yeah, like you break it apart and there's more babies. And this is kind of like what I was showing with the other one. Like this is never going to recover. Like these these chewed off ends mm -hmm. of the rabbit. Um, so maybe eventually you can pluck, you can actually prune out this top part and reroot that. So and leave the this, stub behind. Like all of this here, you would, you could say, you could eventually. remove and then just plant this new growth at the top. You could eventually, yeah, you'd have to, I would let it grow for a while and then just cut it off and treat it like a cutting, let it callus over for a few mm -hmm. days and then reroot it. This is a pretty tough little plant. There's hardly anything you can do to really kill it short of overwatering it. Um, but yeah, I would just kind of make wow. some reasonable. Because see, eventually, this was like probably the original plant, this in the center. And see how uh -huh. it's it, that's what you can lop off and take all these yeah maybe i'll use this as an example to show people let's see if i can get it apart you got your money's worth out of this guy i sure did <laughs> yeah but that just goes to show how long one plant yeah, can sit in so, one pot see this is what this is what i think was probably the original plant and if i remove all these dead leaves mm -hmm off the bottom. There's still a little, you know, life to it at the top. 
and you could replant that? I would try. I'm not going to say that I know for sure that it'll work, but I'm not so I'm all like you said to me earlier, you're the one that experiments with stuff. Yeah, I do because what, what do I have to lose? That's I could true. just throw it away or I could see. That's um, the beauty of house plants. You right. just try to give yeah, it a... I'm not sure. I'm not sure how well this will do because this when I cut it, it looks kind kind oh, of dry see. and let's cut it a little bit more. Wow. We'll see. Give it a shot. Okay. So with these, would you uh, prune the roots or would you no, leave this? You I leave would this? plant that just how it is. And so from that, we've mm -hmm. already so far yeah, got a whole bunch. See, Look at this little guy. Adorable. He would he would need to be in a little tiny pot mm -hmm. for a while. and Fairy garden material. Not, yes, definite fairy garden material. And yeah. we've got one here today, so maybe. <laughs> but it's not the right kind. It's a... It's oh, not a right. succulent. See, so. look at Jen. Don't mix tropicals and succulents together. They will. Someone will be unhappy. <laughs> someone <laughs> that in is that group is going to lose out. That is not a match. So awesome. I love that we can just make a giant mess here, Tanisha. This is great. <laughs> and then we can have DJ clean it up. That's when right. We're done, our director. So these now, do these have to be dried out? No. Now tell me the difference between having to dry out, you know, these that you broke off versus separating these. These don't really have roots on them yet. Um, if there was a real obvious place that you know, wouldn't hurt to leave them around for a day, but there's not really, I just kind of, I can't see any real like wet area that I broke it off from. If there was something obviously like oozing, I would let that Okay, so that's, a, that's the rule of thumb. Uh, yeah, with succulents. Anything that is like an, basically like an open wound almost, you want to let that dry up before you put it in soil. But if you just do a clean break where you've got nice roots, yeah, you can just go right in. I would right just in. put it right in. Good to know. So, to yeah, know. Tanisha, this is, there's plenty for you to take oh, what, what you want. And I'm just going to use the same pot again and pot it back up. Beautiful. Okay. Well, while we're cleaning this mess up, we're going to go back again and check with Liz and John to tell you about how you can support, support Mid-American Gardener. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, Tanisha. And for those of you just tuning in, no, not John next I to me. I am not John, sorry. <laughs> um, so in, as we find our way back into the studio, we've had some pre-records, some <laughs> scheduling conflicts. John was unable to be with us this evening. I really appreciate my friend and colleague, uh, Aaron Lippitz, coming in in a pinch here to ask for your support of this great, long-standing mm -hmm. local gardening show that is entertaining and informative. It's just the you know bread and butter of what public media truly is and what it can be for you and you are an important part of that at willgive.org or 217-244-9455 as we wrap up this calendar year uh, we are looking for your pledge of support you supporting us into the next year bringing more great local programming more national programming our goal for tonight for mid-american gardener mm -hmm. is fifteen hundred dollars and you can help right now but let's just talk about what jen and tanisha were covering so many interesting tidbits in yeah, that segment there's a lot um, that they go through and some of it is really surprising to me and we were just talking about that what a cute idea to use her son. it was a sun sun's changing mm -hmm. table as um like a potting area station. Like potting station yeah what a uh, cute idea like talk about uh, reduce, reuse, and recycle Absolutely. type thing, like giving it more of a shelf life, giving it mm -hmm. more of a space in your home. And then Jen was talking about that kitchen cart, which right. I'm sure you're very familiar with as a baker and someone mm -hmm. who spends a lot of time in the kitchen. Uh, something easy that you can find that helps you do what they're doing right here in the studio, making a delightful mess, repotting these plants, <laughs> showing you exactly how it's done, not talking about it, showing it. And yes. if you want to support that, willgive.org or 217-244-9455. But you're not just supporting Mid-American Gardener. Right, you're supporting all of the great shows that we have here um, on the fair. Classical BTS, of course, is one of them. The 21st on um, our AM station, great uh, news and information that you can find there. And State of Change, which is mm -hmm. a brand new show also hosted by Tanisha um, about the environment and the changes it's having here in your home in central Illinois. And all of this is at WILL, and you can help support Midmare Gardener and all the shows that we've mentioned at 217-244-9455 or online at willgive.org. And check out the longevity of Midmare Gardener Almost 40 years. That's Can you believe crazy. That? And it's only possible with your support right now. Sustaining membership is an easy and convenient way to support the programs you love. As a sustaining member, 
you make an ongoing monthly contribution from either your checking account or credit card. The amount you give is entirely up to you. Your donation will happen automatically each month, so you never have to worry about your membership expiring. If you do need to change the amount of your monthly contribution, just contact us. Best of all, when you make a qualifying donation, you can enjoy our most popular member benefit ever, PBS Passport. With Passport, you can watch an incredible collection of drama, science, art, and history programs whenever you want. You can stream them on your TV using the PBS app for your Roku, Apple TV, Fire TV, newer Samsung Smart TV, or Android TV, or watch on your phone, tablet, or computer. So please, call or go online to start your sustaining membership now. And that was just a little bit about uh, what a sustainer is. The sustaining memberships are ongoing monthly contributions that you make from your checking account or your credit card. They renew every month, so your membership's always current, your benefits are always current, and your support of WILL is always current. And we don't have to send you re renewal reminders in the mail, so we save on postage and um, printing costs and you save on some unwanted recycling that you don't have to deal with anymore. So sustaining memberships are a great way to go. If you are a member, uh, member if you are an employee of the University <laughs> of Illinois, you can also donate um, as a sustainer by payroll deduction. That's a really easy way to donate. That's how I donate. It's how a lot of us here donate to this station. So if you would like to become a sub sustaining member of WILL, if you're a Mid-American Gardener watcher and you watch every week, Become a sustainer, and then you know that your donation is directly helping this show. Willgive.org or 217-244-9455. We hope to hear from you this evening. And if we do, those benefits that Aaron was mentioning, they are a plenty, one of which being passports. So that's just a great way to unlock a lot of the programs that you love mm -hmm. public media for, whether it's the murder mysteries or the documentaries or those masterpieces that are true masterpieces or your local gardening shows, your local environmental shows, mm -hmm. whatever it is, it's at your fingertips. But some of those things take a little extra to get to. So that's what your passport does, just unlocks more great programs. It's all through the PBS video app. That's a free download, but access that member benefit today at willgive.org or 217-244-9455. There's also patterns. Everybody loves Everybody patterns. Everybody loves patterns. Uh, so that's your monthly touch point with us that you receive in the mail, station happenings and news, and also those great national programs that mm -hmm. you love. And um, it's just a really great piece that's in your home that you can reference so that you don't miss your favorite program. So again, unlock those member benefits, become a friend today at willgive.org or 217-244-9455. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited to see what else Tanisha and Jen have in store for yes, us. Yes, I am learning a lot as someone with a, a brown thumb. I need, <laughs> I need this show. This is my education this evening. We hope that you're enjoying the show and learning a lot right along with us. Again, willgive.org or 217-244-9455. Thank you. All right, thanks guys. And so we've got a couple more uh, projects that Jen bought in for us. So this is, well, which one do you want to do first? Well, might as well do continuing with the broken pot okay. um, the, theme. The of, broken pot theme. We're going to repot things kind of at the out wrong time, out of necessity, not because it's the right time. So this is an asparagus fern that has a lot of sentimental value. My son and I, when I was very pregnant with my daughter, we did a mommy and me class um, where we made little fairy gardens. And this was his fairy garden, and I will point out some of the features of his fairy garden. Oh, yes. Was it's been added to over the years. So Margaret's five. So this Margaret's guy. Margaret's five. So it's been in this pot for five years. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, the the original fairy is somehow missing her hand, but she's still in that here. Happens that sometimes. happens. We have a like it's so packed in here. It's hard to get these things out. We have a little snail. Um, we have a little lightning bug. What else do we have in here? I yeah. love these things. These are and they're fun classes. If you've yeah. ever done a fairy garden class, little ladybug. Check them but out. But some of Andrew's additions as he's gotten into this, um, he found it's a subway car. Okay. So he said it was like the red line going to the Cubs game in Chicago. See? So you know you got to make your fairy garden your own and make it mean something yeah, to you. Yeah, that's that sentimental value yeah. of the fairy garden. And then um, a stone triceratops that we got at the Science Museum in Denver. Because boys. Because boys and <laughs> dinosaurs. 
And what? who doesn't like the idea of a triceratops next to a subway car and yes. then, oh, piece of the broken pot? I'm not exactly sure how this ended up on the ground. Um, my kids were involved in it, but so was our new kitten. So, so you'll never the whole, know. Well, I'll never know the true story because not me and I don't know do everything oh, yeah. at my house. And I'm sure Kitty, this looks very pettable. Oh very yes, tall. and very yes, looks like uh, it looks like some of the cat toys we yes. buy, right? So, so I had gravel on the top of this. We're just gonna get this out of the way. I have again no idea what we're gonna uncover. This is this should have been dealt with. I can dealt with before it's actually kind of heaving oh, the yeah. soil up see. on this side because it is trying to get out so this is my favorite i love the big review looking at roots <laughs> i just love taking uh, plants out of root, the pots and just looking at the root system and What's seeing like, how they oh wow Ooh, asparagus fern have really thick um fleshy roots so i, I don't know we might not be able to get this out with it we might have to come go wet it and come back because if I pull on this, this is in here so tight. You don't think we're going to be able to get it? Yeah, like, I might need to go wet it in the kitchen and come back in. Okay. Well, let's switch then. Let's okay. let's work on these two. Sure. So these you've got bagged up, and, and we'll when we go back to Liz and John, we'll magically come back, and that will be out of the pot. Sure, sure. So... Let's tell us about these guys. So I picked up somewhere a an Easter cactus. We've talked about the Christmas cactus mm -hmm. on the air lots of times this time of year. And there's technically there's a Thanksgiving cactus, um, there's a Christmas cactus, and there's a, a Easter cactus mm -hmm. that hardly anybody knows about. So when I, I saw one, I grabbed it, and it was kind of struggling. I'm not sure why. You like the sad ones, I like don't the you? sad <laughs> stuff. It wasn't struggling when I bought it, but it started struggling <laughs> afterwards. And I grabbed what pieces were left that looked like they had life to them, and I just laid them on top of some potting mix, and I put it in the um, handy dandy Ziploc bag, which Jen calls personal greenhouse. <laughs> yes, personal greenhouse uh, in my kitchen. Uh, your holiday cactuses are a little different than the succulents that we were doing previously. They actually are native to rainforest areas, so they can oh. tolerate a little more moisture. And so that's why sealing them up in the plastic the, bag gotcha. was an okay idea. Um, but I, I don't know if the camera can get this, but the, the roots on these kind of start mm -hmm. where the two leaves um, come together. So just by laying that across the top of the soil, they started to root and they started to put out new growth. That's a, if you're doing cuttings and you want to know if it worked, you can kind of gently tug and if you feel some resistance, but you got to be careful because you can bust the roots mm -hmm. off. But if you see new growth, that is a great sign that you're doing something right and, and it's working. So originally, how many did you put in here? Just a I don't few? know. It looks like it. one, two, three, probably three. So this bag says January 3rd. Yes. It's which been is incredible. In there a while. It's been almost a year. Um, and if you just put maybe two or three petals in there, I mean, that's a lot of growth in, in yeah. 10, 11 months. So. And well, and it's one of those things that it's like, oh, it's doing okay. I can wait a little longer. <laughs> I mean, I've probably left it in there way longer than I needed to. Uh, but again, we're getting to a point where if I don't do something with this, mm -hmm. that we're going to probably have, a, have an issue. Um, now this one was a complete, <laughs> this was also done around the same time. Um, We've got some neighbors in here. Yeah, but this <laughs> this is the, the I am a, such a poor example of an expert, <laughs> but I'm going to bring this anyway. Um, so this is the same cactus and um, some pieces that I did a little later, I did these um, in May. Okay. And um, so same kind of situation. There's some new growth. Mm -hmm. There's some that that's got great roots. It's kind of broken off. But I was lazy, and I had started. Um, some people that watch the show um, religiously would remember I brought um, a variegated kumquat tree on the show before, and I had some fruits with seeds. And so, the, of course, the kids were like, will it grow? And I said, let's try. Let's find out. Let's find out. And so I planted a whole bunch of these kumquat seeds in this pot, and they sat there for over a month in the little Ziploc greenhouse. And they didn't do anything. And I thought, oh, dead as a doornail, probably nothing. And I forgot about it. And I was, I had these pieces of cactus. And I just literally grabbed this pot and I thought, better than nothing. And stuck the <laughs> stuck cactus down pieces in, in. And then I noticed, what is that growing? That doesn't look like cactus. And it's the kumquat trees. And sure enough. So we've got one, two, three. We've got seven kumquat trees that need to be 
teased out and given their new their new home that's some that's some cactus bits that didn't make it ah. so they just kind of dried up and faded away but these little trees really like we were talking about the pot sizes we mm -hmm. don't want to put them in a big huge pot i was just going to try to put them in some of these small pots that i'm reusing from mm -hmm. that i think these had succulents in them to start with uh, but kind of see what the root systems look like let them grow um, and fill these pots before potting them into something this size. Now your kumquat tree at home, do you still have it? Yeah. How, so, how big is it? It's about the same size. I had one branch kind of died off this summer and I don't know why, but it's loaded with fruit. Really? Yes. And it's, now how long did it take you to get to where it was bearing fruit or did you already buy it established? I bought it pretty established. It didn't have any fruit on it though, but it had like one fruit on it the first year and like every year is a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Kumquats I like because they um, they can tolerate the cold, the temperature in our house, which is not really that cold, but it's cold to it's a citrus not. tree. It's sure. not Florida, right? <laughs> <laughs> so kumquats can handle like the humidity and the temperature mm -hmm. a little bit better. and. That variegated kumquat is actually technically a hybrid of a kumquat and another citrus. But I ended up actually using some of the fruits in it last winter, oh. you know, all of our pandemic projects. Um, <laughs> I used it to flavor kombucha and it turned out really, nice. really good. So from, from this pot, you know, when we tease these away, from here to producing fruit, give me a ballpark. Year, two years? Oh, I think even longer than that. Really? I would think like any kind of fruit bearing tree. I think it would be five years or more. Five I mean, it'd more. have to get to a, a good size and you'll notice these are not variegated. So ah, that that var variegation that is not always inheritable. Gotcha. It's not always um, what we think it's going to be. So interesting. It'll okay. still be a good kumquat in the end. It'll be a cool tree, cool it conversation will be a piece. Cool tree. All right. So when you are taking these out, what is the proper way to pluck them out? You don't, I would dump the whole pot out okay. and just kind of gently, okay. should we just do it? Yeah, let's do it. Let's make DJ, a mess. DJ, we're making more mess. Here we go, Deej. Just for you. So I, I have no idea, like I said, what we're going to really look be seeing here. And some of these pieces of cactus I can just pot mm -hmm. back up there. You and I are similar in that whenever we're dumping things out, any little piece that's salvageable, we're like, whoop, move that guy right over mm. there. Yep. That's a free plant. All right, right. right. <laughs> so, yeah, I want to be careful to try to not disturb the roots of the kumquat as much as possible. They've, they've made it through a lot. I don't want to kill them now. <laughs> but you can kind of see on this how the roots of the mm -hmm. um, cactus are coming off those joints between the leaves. That's technically a leaf for this plant. Now the kumquats, you planted those in May or even before? Before. Before. Okay. Before I don't. I, I again, bad expert here. I did not make the proper record. Real expert. Real did expert. not make the proper record of what I did. It was one of those. Will they grow? Yeah. Let's take them let's in the see. pot. Let's check it out. Oh, you did get a lot of them. Yeah. So. So okay. While we're while we're at this stage, let's say I'm dividing plants at home mm -hmm. and I just want to check for health. Sure. Maybe I'm thinking about sharing with a friend. We've heard a lot oh, about sure. jumping worms. We've heard a lot about things, oh, creepy, crawlies. creepy crawlies. So when you're looking at this and you're deciding, okay, is this healthy enough to share? What do you do? Um, jump, jumping worms aside, if I'm just looking at the roots, uh, healthy roots are generally white okay. um, if, and they're firm. Uh, unhealthy roots tend to be black or brown. Um, they'll be... Um, kind of uh, falling apart, mm -hmm. um, kind of brittle, brittle. They'll have kind of an outer, an outer pe a bit that will come off, like slough off almost like skin. Um, yeah, they'll just, they might have an odor if you've got some root rot, you can kind of, mm -hmm. might be kind of mucky and yuck when you open it up. Um, but yeah, these, when we, when we pot them up, you're gonna to want to try to have a pot about that, about as deep as the roots go. So some of these, some oh, yeah, of these those tiny, are pretty pot, little starter pots. Those will probably perfect. be a good, mm -hmm. good size. And I just washed these out in the sink. Um, these pots that had succulents in them before. You could get if you want to go the extra step and do like a 10% bleach um, mm -hmm. water. You could, depending on how sensitive what you're potting up is, you might might want to go that route. Okay. Uh, but these are going to be potted actually in the same um, mix that we used for the succulents because it's uh, citrus appreciates a, a very free draining okay. 
soil as well. So this we'll use that same okay. same potting know. mix. Good to know. Now, so what are you going to do with these? I'm going to give some to you. Awesome. <laughs> yes. I love that answer. Because as much as I love my kumquat tree, I don't need seven of them. True. <laughs> so if you had to, I mean, ballpark, the one in your house, how tall would you say it is? It's probably about three feet tall. Okay. Yeah, it's in, it's in about a 14-inch pot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's about... About three feet tall. Nice, nice. I'm excited. I can't wait to, well, five years from now. Uh, <laughs> I, wanna, I want the report. <laughs> <laughs> I think my oldest will be in college. Um, but no, this, that's part of the journey, right? Is right. Kind of letting just it happen over time. watching it grow and enjoying the process. Now for the cactuses, let's talk about their roots and how you would um, start these. Would you lay this on its side? Would you stand it straight up? I would kind of like I would kind of lay this on its side. You see, the roots are already there. Mm -hmm. I would just kind of lay that down in a pot, um, and we're going to use for the um, for these cactuses. I would they like a little heavier soil than a true cactus blend, so I would do like half and half with a okay. regular potting mix just to add a little bit of okay of um, water holding capacity they still you still don't want them to sit in water that can rot them away just like any other succulent sort of likes a little a little bit, bit more because they're more in a rainforesty kind of climate excellent so okay. yeah well we will get these put into the little pots and while we are doing that and cleaning up we're going to switch out for the what's this one asparagus fern asparagus fern but before that we're going to throw it back to liz and john to talk to you more about how you can support mid-american gardener um, and be a friend of our show. We'll be right back. And again, we're back and I am not John. Once again, <laughs> my name's Erin Lippitz. I'm the major gifts director at WILL. I'm joined here by Liz Westfield, who is in our marketing department. And we are learning quite a bit tonight in this episode of Mid-American Gardener. Uh, I learned so much about succulent plants and that there are cactus for every holiday, apparently. There's an Easter cactus, All right. Thanksgiving cactus. I know, I didn't know that either. I think she said Christmas cactus, I don't know, yeah. They're like Memorial Day cactus. I don't know. <laughs> just making that up. But like, who, who knew about stuff like this? I mean, I certainly didn't. And they couldn't live together either. Yeah. There were, there's reference about like uh, tropical plants and succulent plants like not coexisting very well. Right. Just again, we're just checking the boxes on all the reasons I have killed <laughs> so many plants in my life. But hopefully moving forward, it will all have changed and I can make a fairy garden. You can make a fairy garden. That was that was so sweet. How it was it really meant a lot to her to be able to do that for her kids and with her kids. What a great activity. Yeah, for kids actually. I would love to do that with my daughter and the little train that reminded him of going to the Cubs games. I'm not a Cubs yeah. fan, but bestow my heart. I me. know it was very, very sweet. All of this that you're getting tonight um, is made possible from do donations from viewers like you. You can go online at willgive.org or donate, uh, go to the phones, 217-244-9455. And this show is truly a local show. We've got local, local panelists, local hosts. They are um, dealing with very local regions or zones of Illinois, telling you the information that you need to make your garden grow and have healthy vegetables and healthy plants all through the year. And it's our local viewers, our local donors that are essential to this program, making it happen every day. Remember our goal, $1,500 mm -hmm. by the end of this program tonight. Go ahead, go to the phones, 217-244-9455 or online at willgive.org. And it's not lost on us that you can certainly get gardening advice just about anywhere these days, yes, but we can. think it's the people uh, it's the community connection. Mm -hmm. It's that Jen is willing to share her and her kids' fairy garden with you and tear it up and look at it yeah. and fix it. And so you have that connection to her. You have the connection to the community. You know these are local people. And honestly, I love Jen and Tanisha's approach. Like, look, this is real world gardening. Life gets in the way. Sometimes I don't get to repotting. So we're doing it in the winter. Are we supposed to? No, but we're <laughs> going to show you how. Uh, so it's, it's the personalities, it's the people, and it's you. You make this work willgive.org or 217-244-9455. And if you get somebody on the phone or you go on online, tell us why you love Mid-American Gardener. Do you share my same love for it, even though I can't grow <laughs> anything or keep anything alive? I love the people. Or is it something else? Is it that you counted on it throughout the pandemic and it got you out in the garden? It got you thinking about something else. It got you just back to normal. That's really important. We love to hear that stuff. 217-244-9455 or willgive.org.
Is there a program you'd like to watch again? Maybe a performance you didn't get a chance to see? Well, now you can with PBS Passport, a terrific member benefit that lets you stream more than a thousand hours of PBS and local programming on your computer or through the PBS app on your phone, tablet, smart TV, or streaming device. All your favorites wherever, whenever you want. And with your qualifying contribution, you'll help make the great programs on this station possible. So reach out to the number on your screen or go online and get your PBS Passport today. And the great thing about Passport is if you love these how-to shows, it, we have some great ones that just got released on Passport. They're from American Public Television, things like America's Test Kitchen, all these great cooking shows oh, that love those. are just fantastic. They make me really hungry and I still <laughs> haven't learned how to cook, but they're really great shows and you can unlock those with your Passport, which is a member benefit. Mm -hmm. If you become a friend of WILL um, right now at 217-244-9455 or online at Will Give org or if you're already a friend then start getting to those shows with mm -hmm. your pbs passport but it's not for nothing if you call in tonight with your gift because we have mm -hmm. some great gifts to give back we to do you. have some great gifts and that pbs passport is a benefit at that five dollar uh, a yes. month as a sustainer sustainer or sixty dollars <laughs> annual gift or one-time gift um, and it, it is a great benefit that is one of our most popular benefits i love it i love watching all of those cooking shows and binge watching all my old favorites all the time, especially during the winter. We got winter months coming mm. up, perfect time to become a donor, get that member benefit. Another thank you gift that you can choose from is this Mid-American Gardener mug, $7 a month as a sustainer or $84 annually or a one-time gift. Cute little mug, plant stuff in it, pour your coffee in it, your tea, your cider. This would be great for the winter too. And $10 a month, let me reach it, $10 a month as a sustainer or $120 as an annual gift or one-time gift. What a great book, the Midwest Native Plant Primer. You can get that as your gift. It can help you watch the show, take notes in it, maybe not in it, but <laughs> maybe in the back cover. Read about all the plants in your local area. That's gonna help you grow your garden when we get to spring and summer. And of course, both of those are yours. $15 a month as a sustaining member or $180 as an annual or one-time gift. We understand that it's not the right time for everyone to make a donation tonight, but if it is a good time for you, we hope to hear from you. If you're already a member, maybe consider increasing your monthly gift or your annual gift. Join our leadership circle at $250 annually or our vision circle with a donation of $1,000 or, uh, or more a year. You can do sustaining memberships for that as well. We'd love to hear from you tonight. Support this program, support all the great programs on WILL, everything that you love, everything that you rely on. It is an essential service to our community. Yes, and you can give a gift of membership. Oh, Tis yeah. the season for gifting. What a great one. Willgive.org or 217-244-9455. All right, thanks, guys. And as promised, the asparagus fern has been wrestled <laughs> yes. out of its pot. Um, so first of all, tell us a little bit about the process because you had to take this guy into the kitchen. Yeah, and I took this into the kitchen and... Um... <laughs> I thought just putting some water on it would help and it didn't. And so I found a butter knife and I was able to go around the edge and loosen it up. But asparagus fern, as I was mentioning earlier, tends to have a real fleshy root. And so you can see it was, it's very much in need of wow. repotting. Now is that solid? It's very solid. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. That's not going to be teased no, out? No, there's, I, maybe a wow. little bit, maybe a little bit, but um, this is one of those things. How do you know when you're, plant is ready to be repotted um, when it looks like this when it looks like <laughs> when it looks like a pot of spaghetti when you reach out because like look there's it's no consumed. soil yeah. in between these roots it's just solid massive roots and I'm and what can happen in this sort of situation is that the stuff in the center starts to die yeah. it doesn't get it doesn't tend to get water doesn't penetrate so this um, this might be a bigger project to take home and work on trying to tease this apart a little a wow. little bit just to make sure we can just loosen it up just a tad um, but the, the state of this thing um, this was the pot that I originally was going to use um, that's not going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen because <laughs> if I, I can fit it in now, but if this thing grows another layer of these heavy roots, I'll have to break this pot to get it out. And I don't want to break the pot if I don't have to. It's a cute pot. Yeah. And I've had to do that on occasion with certain plants. I was telling you about my Monstera. Mm -hmm. I just about had to, <laughs> had to do that too this, um, this last summer. 
Um, but I think I'm going to go with maybe something more like this that's got more of an open top mm -hmm. that you could get a butter knife <laughs> around the edge. So plant uh, pot selection isn't always the cute pot. It's always, you do have to think about what you're planting and what it ends up doing. Those are some big roots. It's, I don't think yeah. I've seen um, asparagus fern roots before. Those yeah, are meaty. I, they are. They're <laughs> they're very similar to um, a spider plant if you've repotted a spider mm -hmm. plant. Mm -hmm. So it probably comes from a part of the world that has a dry season. So ah, you have some storage. some storage, some gotcha. water storage, nutrient storage. Anything to do with pruning here? Um, I see like a couple of twigs, you know, down yeah. in the crown. Would you would you do any pruning with that or would you just? What I do, I would just prune out any dead stuff, which mm -hmm. is kind of what you do with asparagus fern anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and usually when I bring it in for the um, winter time, there's kind of a, a dieback that happens. Uh, but it really liked my front porch this summer and it filled out um, considerably. I thought this was maybe on its way out and I may have been contributing to that by not <laughs> not repotting it as I should have. Uh, but um, it's actually flowered. It doesn't have oh. much of a, it's not a showy flower, but it just, it looks kind of the same, but you see some little tiny flowers on the, mm -hmm. in among the foliage. Right now, um, the ones, when it starts, the when the fronds start getting yellow, all these little tiny leaves fall off and it's kind of messy. Mm -hmm. but now, if you were to, um, are you able to get starts off of something like this? And if you were, how do you go about it? Is this a good one this to is, try to share? Well, you could. Um, this is one where like, there's kind of a natural spot in the middle that if you wanted oh, to, okay. wanted to but you'd divide really have to it. get in there. You'd really have to get in there and really tease these roots apart. And I would try to do the least amount of damage as possible. It could be possible to do. But it do. looks healthy, right? Yeah, healthy it plant looks otherwise? like it's doing really, really well. And we'll have to put it back so that the subway train can have a new, <laughs> a new, a new area. Home. Yeah, <laughs> we might have to. It's a slightly bigger pot, so we're mm -hmm. sticking with that inch to two inch um, bigger. Um, it's probably a good thing that I had to do it, even though it's the wrong time of year. And I'm not sure how much longer this would have. Yeah. Might have broken the pot eventually. Well, I've got a ZZ plant at home right now that it's literally pressing. You can see the root like pressing <laughs> oh. on the outside of the pot. And I don't know if we're going to make it till spring. I mean, it's really tight in there. So yeah. I, I totally understand. You might need understand. to do the same thing. But I think with that one, I would have to get a saw. I mean, this my ZZ plant is probably about five feet tall. Oh, wow. Yeah. I had one that got that big, yeah, and it couldn't fit in my house anymore. No, no. So um, before we go, we've got a few minutes left. We've got some sure. questions that folks sent in. So let's ask, this is from Margaret Bent in Lincoln. Margaret wants to know if you're supposed to cut back your knockout roses. I would hold off on that just because we don't know how hard the winter is going to be. And so with roses in general, you tend to get some winter dieback where part of the um, stem dies. And if you cut it back really far now and we get six inches of dieback, that could go clear back into the crown and it would be dead. So I would just wait, wait. unless it's so big that it's like blocking a sidewalk or something and you need to you know, get around, okay. around it. But if you can wait, yeah, wait, waiting is the wait answer. until you see some growth this spring. So you kind of kind of guides you where to cut. Okay. Um, next question. We've always talked on the show about not rushing to do your yard cleanup because we want to be good stewards to our pollinators mm -hmm. and our overwintering insects. So is now a good time, mid to late November? When should we get out there and start picking up? Uh, well, there's certain things that I would clean up, like hostas and daylilies. That just kind of looks messy. Um, things that have seed seed heads or um, like ornamental grasses definitely leave them up for something to look at you don't want to clear everything out and just have a moonscape out your window <laughs> you need something for the snow to collect on uh, but definitely also if there's something that um, tends to start growing really early in the spring and it's kind of a pain to get the old out with mm -hmm. the new growing up you could clean that up now mm -hmm. make Those it easy areas. yeah make it easier for yourself in the spring okay all right and then let's see what do we do now we've we talked about how this is not the time to do the repotting, <laughs> but what do you do if you bring your plants in for the summer or the winter, I'm sorry, and they're just not doing too hot, they're not, they're not surviving, you don't know if they're gonna make it till spring, is there any last ditch, uh, you know, effort that you have at home, like a plant <laughs> hospital? <laughs> I, I would say if you can get a plant light, okay. a lot of people think they have better light than they actually do. Um, plant lights you can get 
within you know 25 to 30 dollars you can get something um, that'll light pretty decent size area mm -hmm. um, some weak fertilizer it's not the greatest thing to do but if um, you're really trying to throw the last ditch effort in there <laughs> you know don't go overboard but just a little bit and the light will make a huge difference and don't overwater and don't overwater that's the big one for the winter months okay jen thank you so thank much you. we're out of time I had so much fun being back in the <laughs> studio fun. for the first time in forever. We made a huge mess. Awesome. It was great. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for watching. And also thanks to Liz and John for coming to talk about fundraising and supporting your Mid-American Gardener. And I hope we get to do more of this uh, soon. So we'll see you next time. Good night.